G'day folks, welcome to the Fife Life, Australian canary hobby. I'm Mike, uh, these are my fifes, and uh, this is the latest episode, it's journal number six, pick up sticks. Uh, we've, got a, we've got a good topic for you today, uh, and it's, it's still continuing on with that progressive nature of the channel, um, and, and giving it that narrative, which I spoke about last time. You know, the, the narrative so far, if you're new to the channel, is that I, I did speak about an intro to the hobby and canary keeping in Australia. Then I spoke a little bit about uh, the shed and the setup. I spoke about acquiring birds and acquiring good birds uh, and the importance of supporting our canary clubs to do that. And then following on from that, I spoke about our waters and the importance of fresh daily water, but some of the, the, the products and, and some of the uh, you, you know, the, uh, the supplements and so forth that I use in the water and the schedule for that. Then we spoke about seed and today we're going to talk about egg food and, and our soft food um, and what I feed the birds and, and a couple little tips there and uh, hopefully some little gold nuggets for people to take away. Um, you know, maybe the experienced guys, you're all over it, uh, but for the new guys, hopefully this gives you a little bit of direction because there really is a million and one egg food videos out there or soft food videos out there and you can get a little bit lost and and you know we're an Australian based channel so hopefully this will give you uh, some direction with that. You may have noticed with the channel and that intro might be a little hint that uh, it's time to sharpen things up a little bit. Um, I've just been uh, absolutely blown away with the, the positivity, the messages, the feedback um, but the channel's making its way onto other people's platforms. Um, none more so than, than my greatest mentor and, and a dear friend, Mr. Matt Eld from the Canary Room. Sincere gratitude, mate. And, and my return to you and my return to some of the people that have liked and have supported the channel, um, you know, Shane Evans from Direct Bird Products. I've got the support of the, the Australian uh, Fife Club in New South Wales, um, Andrew, uh, Peter Southgate, who supplied me so far with just a, a dream stud of birds. Um, you know, the Kendall stud have been on here and hit the like button and, and there's, there's some really important people in the hobby that are showing a bit of interest in the channel. So my return and my gratitude to you guys is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sharpen things up a little bit and give it a little bit of a, a touch up. So whilst it'll have the same relatable and realistic feel about the channel, um, I just think it's time to make it a little bit, uh, a little bit better. And, and hopefully that's my way in return of saying thank you for sharing and I really hope that, that I make you proud. All right, so uh, without further ado, let's get into the episode. It's about egg food, but before we do that, I've got a little something that I want to say. All right, shout out time. It's a new little segment uh, that I'm going to make official at each, each uh, episode, each journal. I'm going to give a shout out. Uh, there's a couple that I want to do. Firstly, uh, I want to give a, a very big shout out to a gentleman in the Coffs Harbour region. Charlie Portelli, thank you, sir. Uh, you have the, the call to action you have answered. We now have uh, someone that is going to allow David from David's Bird Room to uh, drop by and have a look at the Australian canary hobby in that area. And I can't thank you enough, mate. So uh, that connection and, and, and hooking David up with a, a contact that happened via the channel. Um, so I'm super proud of that. And, and I can't thank you enough, mate. So we've never met, we've never spoken. But uh, the call to action was, can we get uh, David from David's Bird Room uh, into someone's bird room and, and maybe let him do some filming and, and check out what we're doing over here. He's coming all the way from Ireland. Um, his daughter's having her first baby. Uh, you know, what a special time. And, and now he can have a bit of a look at our hobby. So cheers, mate. I really appreciate that. Another shout out. Look, it's going to be no surprise, uh, but to my best mate in the, in the hobby, Matt Eld and my mentor. And, and, you know, we've been rolling. This goes on seven years, mate. Um, I can't thank you enough. Yesterday it was my little girl's birthday and she turned 10 um, and, and the jingle, the canary room jingle, she knows better than her alarm clock. And, and like probably many of your kids and, and grandkids out there, um, the canary room has been, it's been part of her growing up and I've got many photos and shared many moments with Matt where she's been sitting having dinner and, and we've sat and watched the shows together. But uh, you did a shout out for her, mate. Um, and it just made a day and it made mine as well. So bless you, buddy. Um, you, you are you, you're someone in my corner that I'm, I'm very lucky to have and, and our friendship is something that I truly treasure. While I'm on those shout outs uh, and over in the UK, another one to Shane Evans. Uh, mate, there, there's some things that are happening and will be arriving and you know what I'm talking about. 
I won't say anything more until until we have stuff here to, to show people. But um, Shane, thank you again. Thank you so much for your support. Um, the, the, Stafford, the, the Stafford show, the big Stafford exhibition over in the UK will be happening in the coming weeks. Uh, so if you're there, get over and say g'day to Shane. And if you can say, Mike says g'day, um, I'd really appreciate that as well. But uh, make sure you have direct bird products. And, and if you're in Australia, yes, probably that the freight could be a little bit of a killer. And maybe there's some way we can work that out by having a distributor or something down the track for Shane. But the, the prices are great and the products are, are fantastic. It's, it can be hard in Australia. A lot of our stuff we have to get on eBay and it can be a little bit tricky to get what you really want. I went through and had a look at everything on his website and, uh, mate, he's got some good stuff, really good stuff. So uh, jump over and, and support him uh, via his channel. He, he's got the bird shed. Uh, he's got... Uh, uh, or the bird room and, and, and he's got his YouTube channel and his Facebook page uh, direct bird products as well as his website so do check check out Shane Evans uh, mate you're a legend there will be things that in, in the future that I will showcase uh, as we know uh, when it happens so cheers mate all right let's get into the the, the thick of it and uh, let's get on to the the next part of the the next segment of the journal all right and that's talking about our egg food all right, folks, so the, uh, the main topic of today's uh, episode in the, in the journal, it's egg food. Um, it, it's really a staple of the hobby. Um, in the breeding season, it's, it's, the, uh, it's the blood that runs through the veins of the shed. It, it's what feeds and, and helps to raise our chicks. Um, in the lead up to the breeding season, it's what conditions our hens. Um, for, the, for the cockbirds, for me, um, it, it's an important part of their weekly diet and overall it's a fantastic source of protein um, and the other ingredients that we put in it can also be sources of nutrients and nutrition for our birds that's really important for their health and well-being. So having a good egg food mix and having a good recipe for that is something that's really important within our hobby. Now as I said at the start there's a million and one you can go on to pretty much every canary channel and you'll have some master chef in the kitchen um, of one of us of mixing up things and putting it in the food processor and whipping it up for the birds. But the reality is, is that um, you, for me, probably a few years ago, I did go a bit over the top and my egg food mix, uh, it really did turn into almost a Michelin star project. Um, and I've wound it back a bit to just the things that I've I've found work really well for the birds and what makes the birds look really good. Um, and that, that's my whole concept. It's my, my mantra in the shed is the basics done brilliantly. I don't go over the top, um, but I do have some key ingredients and they're in there for a reason. And it, it's just something that I've just found. This is what's working for me. If it works for you, if you are, you're a newbie to the hobby or you're, you're new coming in, start with this as a base. And from there, you can experiment and you can tinker, as Matt, Matt likes, Matt Elder, the Canary Room likes to say, we're, we're tinkerers, and we are. And uh, I've, I've sort of played with things and turned the nuts and bolts on it, and I've found what works for me. So I'm just going to let you now, guys, have a little look at the ingredients, and then I'll talk about them, and I'll talk about the mix. Right, here we are, the mixing bowl, uh, stolen from the kitchen. Sorry, Kath, um, but uh, got a, a lovely fresh batch of egg food. Um, one of the things I will say when we talk about egg and soft food is that, that also an element of that is soak seed. Uh, I don't do soak seed, all right? And you can, there's, a, there's reasons why. I mean, you can see it's, it's very hot up here in Townsville in North Queensland, and there are, um, there's risks associated with doing soak seed. If you're a newcomer to the hobby, just be careful with soak seed. Really do your, your homework and, and, and study and really know what you're doing because it can really knock your birds around. If you, if you get it wrong, uh, uh, there, there can be consequences for that. And for me with soak seed, the risks really do outweigh the reward. So I don't do soak seed. So don't think this is part of the episode. It won't be part of future episodes. I don't do soak seed. There are benefits to it, absolutely. Um, and if it works for you, that's great. 
What I do do is I do a very good egg food mix or what I believe is a very good egg food mix. So you saw the ingredients and in this mix here, uh, the, the ingredients are that I have egg and biscuit as the base and the egg and biscuit I use is parcels. Uh, the other base that I have is couscous, a little bit of couscous in there. Um, I have uh, a boiled egg and I, I just up the protein and give them a little bit of a fresh protein sauce. Broccoli, one of the staples of the hobby. Um, peas, or if you're in the UK, petit pois is, uh, is the baby peas um, that, that I use in my mix. Um, if I've got any little tidbits, you would have seen some asparagus tops in there. I've got some little, uh, a little bit of leftovers, or like I said in the other episode, I've got some stalks from the Kailan or the Choi Sum. I'll, I'll pop those in as well. Um, kiwi fruit, uh, a fantastic source of vitamin C. It also gives it a lovely fragrance, so a little bit of kiwi fruit in there. Um, and that's sort of the, the, the basis of my egg food mix. Um, you, I do give a, a veggie mix, as I spoke, once a week. And then at the moment, in the off season, I'm giving my egg food once a week, and, and the birds love it. So that's it. And here's the little gold nuggets. The first one, a little bit of breeding aid. Now, another Vetifarm product. Hey, Mr. Vetifarm, if you're out there, I'm, I'm giving your stuff a plug. If you notice that your uh, sales are going up, feel free to uh, uh, give me a little bit of a, a kickback scheme maybe, or you can you can drop over and send me a message and sponsor the channel. You're, you're welcome anytime. Uh, as Rex Hunt used to say, you can thank your mother for the rabbits. Um, breeding aid, why do I put this in? It's not the breeding season, you're right, but this product is very rich in our essential fatty acids, omega-3, 6, and 9. It's got vitamins A, D, and E, and it Whilst it is a breeding supplement, it's also a supplement that has all of those beneficial things that I can just give to the birds once a week. Um, and, and you know my theory on it, let's not play catch up. I don't want to get to the breeding season and be caught with my pants down. So that's one that I use, breeding aid, it's a Vetifarm product. Now, that there is a, is a, it's a, a two litre mixing bowl and it's half full. So I've got about one litre of of egg food mix. In that there, I put 10 mils. That's a 10 mil syringe, and I put 10 mils of that into my egg food mix, okay? Now this product can be used, it's, it's actually the recommended way to use it, is that you actually just put it, uh, at, they say 20 mils per one kilo of seed, and you just mix it through your seed. Now I don't do that. I don't want moisture, I don't want mold and things which can occur in Townsville because of the humidity, I don't want that in my seed. But I will use it once a week in my off season, in my egg food mix, and it works a treat. It really does. It get The birds look awesome. You get those Amigas up and and you get those uh, the fatty acid, the oils and what have you up in your bird's diet and they start to glisten. I mean, they, the birds in the sunlight, they shine. So it's great for their feather quality. It's great for their, 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 their organs. Um, it's great for their eyes, it's all, all these things. There's a lot of benefit to that. Same with the fish oils and your Amigas for people, okay? You probably could use fish oil, but let's face it, it might smell a bit fishy. So I don't, I don't do fish oil, I'll do that. Now, the next one. Courtesy of the Canary Room, and courtesy of a gentleman by the name of Keith Ferry. I watched one of his epo episodes and, it, and it, it just, it really opened up my eyes to the additional things we can give our birds. Uh, Yakult is the, the common one, that, that's the one that people know very well, but a probiotic. Now probiotic, I use ProLive, just because it's available at the health store that I go to, and it's got well, I've multivitamins and things, but probiotics, your cult's another one, and again, 10 mil. So you've got 10 mil of your breeding age, uh, aid, and 10 mil of your, your probiotic. Great for gut health, great for the bowel, um, just overall a, a fantastic product and the birds are getting it once a week. Now with the egg food, the way that I, I, I do my, my scheduling and, and the way I do things in my shed, for the cock birds, they get egg food once a week, that's it all year round. I don't increase it, I don't need to put a lot of condition on cock birds in the breeding season. Um, I actually like them to stay a little bit lean and fit. I want fit birds. The hens, we go from once a week twice a week and eventually three times a week. And when we get up to three times a week conditioning the hens and getting them ready for the breeding season, then I will wind the greens back. 
and I'll supplement that with the egg food mix to, to, to just to bolt them up. The breeding season is very taxing on the hens, okay? So we want the hens to go into that with a little bit of reserves, with uh, some stockpile, a little bit of waste, uh, weight around the waist as such, and I want the hens to have that conditioning on them so that they're ready for, for egg production, then raising and rearing chicks and sitting on the nest where they deplete themselves of food. So I go, I know people will do egg food daily, but I'm still doing leafy greens and I'm still doing the, the, the veggie mix I spoke about. I've still got supplements in the water, but I will up the calcium in the water and I'll go egg food and the egg food will be given three times a week for the hens. But I just stick once a week for all the cock birds. It's always worked well for me that way. And I don't end up with, with lazy lethargic cock birds when it comes time to breed, they're ready. Okay, so that's the egg food mix and the ingredients. Um, as you saw, it should have that lovely sort of soft and fluffy texture. It shouldn't look like cookie dough. Um, and, and that's when you add your, your liquids, it should still remain lovely like that. And as I said, it's got a beautiful fragrance to it. So I use Passwell's egg and biscuit as the base, a bit of cook couscous, broccoli, maybe some other greens and off tidbits and what have you. Then I use my peas or petit pois, and, uh, and then your, your kiwi fruit for your vitamin C um, and the, the uh, breeding aid and, and the probiotic. So that's what I use. Alrighty, now let's watch the birds love it. Okay, now as I serve this up for the birds, um, I, I'm going to do my usual little, uh, usual little natter and chatter here in the, in the shed. But um, we have some very exciting things happening. Uh, this week, there were some big things that uh, were confirmed that's uh, very exciting for not just the channel and you guys as viewers, but very exciting for me in the shed. So uh, you'll have to wait and see. I'm, I'm not going to do a spoiler alert on that. But I also want to do a, a little bit of a semi-spoiler alert. And that is that uh, as we speak, as we speak, the canary hobby in Australia is going to have a second channel, a specialist breeder uh, of type canaries in, in Australia has uh, taken my advice and my motivation and, and, and a little bit of a, a prompt to have a crack. And I'm bloody proud to say the very least of, I've seen a a little sample of it guys and you're in for something really special so spoiler alert but they're not going to give you too much detail Australia we have a second channel we have a second YouTube channel for the canary lover so how good is that so uh, I'm very proud very very proud to have uh, had uh, just a small part in that and, and motivated someone else to say I reckon I could have a crack at that so uh, the more the merrier, guys. Uh, we're not playing for sheep stations. So there really is no reason for us not to support each other. Um, I think it's, uh, it's such a, a good thing for the, for the hobby, for the future of the hobby. So uh, bravo to you know who. Have a crack, mate. Get out there and, and showcase your birds. And uh, I, can't, I just can't wait to see it. So well done. I've seen little bits, but I can't wait to see the whole thing. So uh, that, that is fantastic. Um, yeah, so we, we, we've got a second channel and uh, I'm excited. All right, now as you can see, they love it. They're, uh, they're smashing that. So we've got our, our little egg food mix in there and our birds coming away on that. That's it guys. Uh, there, there really isn't uh, you know, another an hour in, in talking about egg food. I hope people take something away from that and the ingredients are something that, that triggers you to think, yeah, maybe I could give that a go. Um, but yeah, and uh, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a, another new section. So uh, check this out. All right, folks, well, welcome to a uh, a new little segment of the channel and it's the, the five sin focus and I'm going to talk a little bit about the birds in the shed now you will have to please take into consideration one they've only just finished the molt two I've just kind of plucked them out of their cages um, 
So they're, they're a little unsettled. For those guys in the UK uh, and in Europe, please know that the Australian breed standard for our birds, it, it is different, okay? We do have a different standard. And our breed standard is different due to our quarantine restrictions and, and importation uh, restrictions, okay? So if you're looking at these birds going, they look a little bit different uh, to our, our UK and European standards, you're correct. Um, we'd love to bring some of your birds over and, and breeders like Gerald Spencer, uh, Terry Kelly, of course Matt, if you can someday smuggle some over, that'd be awesome. But this is what we have and this is our standard. And I wanna talk a little bit about these two birds. Now on the left here, we have a clear yellow cock. Uh, he's a purple ring bird. So this will be his third, third year. Uh, and this is a bird that placed first in Manly. He was second in the Wollongong show and he placed second in the Tuggeranong show. So he has excellent pedigree. He has great show results. Now, for my stud and, and for someone maybe getting into the hobby that really wants to have good birds, you, you're getting uh, young birds and getting first year birds, they, they haven't achieved anything. They haven't proven themselves in the, in, in the, in the show scene on the bench. Um, this bird's already delivered for Peter. So I'm very blessed to have this bird in my shed. I'm hoping to get a year or two out of him. Um, and this year I've got him paired to a, a buff yellow hen. She's a little bit of a, a cobby style bird. Um, but he brings a lot to the table. He's got beautiful feather. He, he's got nice shape. Um, he, he's a lovely little bird. I really like him. Now to the right of him is a heavily variegated buff hen. And she's an absolute sweetheart. Now this particular hen, again, she has very good pedigree. Uh, her pedigree is that uh, she placed first at Manly, as he did. Uh, Wollongong, first again. And she was the grand champion at the Bathurst show. Now, again, she's a purple wing bird. Now I might just get this breeding season out of her. That's my, all I might get. I'm hoping I get another year as well. But two lovely birds, they're a little bit older and they bring a lot to the shed as far as getting up and running. So if you are looking to get into the hobby and, and you're looking at birds, don't be afraid to get birds that are a little bit older. You're flighted birds. Looking at getting birds that are brown ring or, or purple ring for me, it was no issue. I've got, a, I've got a couple of birds in the room that are green ring. Now, will they do anything? I'm hoping so because you can see the attention to detail and the care that I put into my birds. So I'm hoping that translates to them delivering. But look at the steadiness on them now that they've settled into the show cages. They're lovely steady birds. They've got nice feather quality. We've moved through the molt. I think they've got nice type. I think these birds really have a lot to offer in our breeding program. Now when they, you know, if I could get them to stand up and really show themselves, well that, that would be lovely. Um, but look, they're, they're Again, they're coming out of the molt. There he goes. He's stand up. Come on, sweetheart. Get up and show yourself. Good on you. Good girl. Lovely little birds. You know, I'm really wrapped with these birds. And again, I can't thank Peter Southgate enough. So there's our fifes in focus today. We've got a beautiful clear yellow cock and a lovely heavily variegated buff hen. All right, guys. Well, that's it for another episode and journal number six of the Fife Life. Uh, it uh, had a little bit of a new look about it. I hope you guys appreciated the fact that I'm sharpening things up and trying to make it a little bit better. Um, you know, we learn as we go, but uh, you know, I hope it's still the same relatable and, and, and uh, realistic approach to the hobby that you guys like. Um, I, I will say that if, if you're enjoying this, please head over to the Facebook page, like, share the YouTube channel, subscribe. Let's try and get some numbers up. Um, you know, on my dog training page, we have nearly a quarter of a million followers. That's pumping over there, and I'd really like to see this take off. Um, you know, whilst I'm getting lovely messages and everyone's sharing it, uh, invite a friend, invite a group, share it on a page, and, and let's try and really give it a nudge, um, because uh, I'm gonna crank things up over the next couple of weeks, and hopefully you guys can appreciate some of the birds we've got in the shed, and, and we'll, we'll be doing uh, more of the, the focus on the fifes now that we've got through all of the basics, and, and the narrative of running through all of those entry-level things. I do want you to know that part of the inspiration of doing this was when I got into the hobby, 
I typed in Australian Canary on YouTube and very little came up. In fact, almost nothing came up. So now we're going to have two channels and uh, that's taking it uh, to, to the next level. And if anyone else wants to jump on board and they want any tips or pointers, feel free to contact me. I'm happy to help how I can. As I said, we're not playing for sheep stations. We really are just trying to make the hobby just uh, grow and, and stay viable and alive in the country. That, that's my mission. I don't want to see the hobby die. I, I love these little birds. Um, and I hope that comes across in, in each of the journals that I, I present. So thanks again, guys. Have a wonderful week. From now, we'll be going every fortnight. And I'm going to try and do alternate weeks to the Canary Room to, uh, you know, give you really the second best offering, let's be honest. It probably even might be a little bit further down the list. Um, but a little something in between while we wait for the, the episodes that Matt does. So enjoy, guys. And remember, a happy fife, a happy life. Cheers.